player 1, we're using the W and S keys to control them, and if it's player 2, we're using the up and down keys to control them. And we're going to be doing that code in a second, but we're going to add a draw method now, and that's public void draw, and it takes graphics as a parameter, of course. And then we're going to add another switch statement, switch ID, and the default is going to be system out print line, and we'll just copy that message we did earlier. And then we'll break. And I'm also going to add break to this because I know I'll forget. If you don't add break, then all of the instances will run at the same time and it will only do the last one. Or it will appear to only do the last one. But now we're going to say, in the case of it being player one, we want to set the color to color.cyan. And then we'll draw the paddle, but we'll do that later, and then break. And in the case of it being two, we'll set the color to red, or let's make it pink. And then we'll draw paddle number two, and then break. But now we're going to make rectangle. We won't initialize it yet. Rectangle paddle and then in our constructor we'll initialize it, we'll make another switch statement, believe it or not, and we're also testing the ID, and the default is system out print line, and we still have that on our clipboard, so just paste that, and then break, and then case one, we want to make the paddle um, um, equal to a new rectangle and actually I'm just thinking we don't need to make a switch for this because the user enters the X and Y themselves so we can just straight out create a new rectangle and give the parameters X and Y and we're gonna make it 10 across by 50 height and now that we have our paddle, we're going to draw the paddle. We're going to say g dot fill rectangle, and that's going to be paddle dot x, paddle dot y, paddle dot width, and paddle dot height. And now that that's done, I'm going to copy this because I cannot be bothered to type that out again. And that should be good. Where uh, did we make our move method yet? I can't remember. No, we haven't, so we'll do that now. And for our move method, we're going to need a quick method called set at y direction. And that's going to take y direction. And that should be good. Now we're going to move public void move and we're going to say um, um, paddle.x plus equals the x direction or sorry we don't need to set the x because the x stays constant it's only the y that moves and then we'll just add simple things to stop it from going off the screen if um, paddle.y goes less than or equal to 15 I think it was and then we're just gonna say paddle.y equals 15 and then we'll just do that for the other one goes greater than or equal to 250 because it's 50 wide or 50 height rather then paddle.y equals 250 and that should be all nice and neat um, let's see we're now going to put the move in our while true and then we'll say thread dot sleep how slow did our ball move let's just check 
seven, so we'll make this eight slightly slower than the ball. And then that should be it for this class, I'm hoping. Now we're going to create the paddles in our ball class. We're going to say um, paddle paddle p1 for player 1 equals new paddle. And we're going to give it an x and a y. The x should be, say, 15. And the y should be halfway down about 140 and it needs an ID which is player 1 and then paddle p2 equals new paddle which should be 385 hmm would that work no it should be 370 and then 140 the same x and then this one is player 2 and now we're going to find where we've added those comments to add the score. But first we'll add a new score. We'll say int p1 score and int, well we don't need to say int again, p2 score. And in our constructor we'll say p1 score equals p2 score equals zero. Just simply set them both to zero. And now that that's done we can add to the score here. Um, so if the ball hits the left hand side, which is player 1 side, then it's going to add a score to player 2. So P2 score plus plus. And then we'll say P1 score plus plus for this one. And let's see here. That should be good. We're going to draw them later on. We'll draw them now actually, go back into our main method and we're going to access the paddle objects from B, so it's going to be b.p1.draw and then it's going to be b.p2.draw with G as a parameter and then we're going to start the thread and this is going to be thread p1 equals new thread and the parameter is b.p1 and then thread p2 equals new thread and b dot p2 and then p1 dot start p2 dot start and now that this is done we need to add our key pressed and key released methods and that's b dot p1 dot key pressed as an e and then we'll copy this and paste it and then we'll copy and paste this into here except change press to released and now we're going to program what we need to do um, when we press buttons on our paddle we haven't done that yet so if they press up set y direction to minus one and set y direction to plus one and then same for this set y direction to minus one and set y direction to plus one and now that that's done um what else what else what else key release that's what we need and I'll just highlight all of this copy paste and rename it to released and now we just change these to zero because we want our paddle to stop now that that is done we'll come back to our main method where these should go on errors and we will just print out our score quickly to the screen we're going to say g dot draw string oh, damn it what's going on there we go draw string and the string is going to be nothing but plus the b dot p1 score and then that's going to be at say um... fifteen and twenty and then we're going to copy this 
and paste this, but first we'll set the color to white. Color dot white, and then we'll change that to P2 score, and this is going to be at 270. And now that we've printed out our scores to the screen, if I run this, as you can see, or we can't see our P2 score, I will find out what's gone wrong. Um, and it's because I changed the Y. The Y should still be 20 and this should be 270. And if I change this, and if you just change it to 15 and 50, 370 and 50, and I run this, you can see that we have our scores either side, and when the ball hits this side, the score adds to here, and when the ball hits this side, the score adds to here, and as you can see, we can move our paddles up and down, but when the ball touches the paddle, nothing actually happens. So I'm going to show you how to do that now, and that's in ball, and where should we do it? In our move method, probably. Or actually, let's create a brand new method, and we're going to say public void um, collision and we're going to say if b wait hold on one second yeah all right so if ball dot intersects p which is our paddle or what is our paddle i'm sorry i can't remember anything wait so p1 ah right p1 dot paddle there we go if the ball intersects p1.paddle, we want to set the x direction. Um, if it hits player 1 paddle, we want to set it back to plus 1. And if the ball intersects with our, wait, sorry, p2 paddle, we will set the x direction to minus 1. And let's run this. Actually, we haven't called collision anywhere, and we're going to call it in our move. It's going to constantly check for collisions. And if we run this now, it should work. Yep, as you can see, we've got our ball bouncing around and our paddles, and we can bounce the ball off the paddles when it's hit. And I'm just going to make the ball a little bit smaller initially to make it more like a ball. <laughs> there we go. Now we have our small ball and our two paddles and we can successfully bounce the ball back and forth. And we have officially made our first game in Java and that is Pong. So congratulations guys. Uh, I hope you learned something from this tutorial. Even if it was a bit boring just kind of going over uh, stuff we've already done, but I just wanted to show you sort of a structure of a game and how we could actually make one knowing the stuff that you know so far. And we didn't even use any images in this game, we just used uh, random shapes. Well, not random shapes, we used rectangles. But um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, guys. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Visit the Java Hub forums if you've got any problems and post in the help or post in the comments. And that's pretty much it. So again, please subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, like this video. Um, sign up to the forums. And anyways, I'm rambling, so I'll see you guys.